In this video, I'm going to continue our discussion on how to use the camera from an Android app to capture an image, store that image, display the image in a composed component, and then also synchronize that image with Firebase Cloud Storage so that we can synchronize the image across multiple devices. We know that there are many steps required for this, and we're going, going to take them out of order a little bit because we essentially need to do a bunch of sub-assemblies and then assemble them together at a final point. So the steps we're going to focus on in this video is the permissions. The uh, camera permission and write external storage permission, we're going to see how to add that to the manifest and request it from a user. First, an overview of what we're going to do with permissions, and then we'll jump right in and do the work. So there are two types of permissions that we typically think about in an Android application. The first is install time permissions, and these are ones that are considered safe because the user will assume that an app will have these permissions. A good example of this is Internet. So users assume that an app on their phone can access the Internet. That's not something we would typically prompt for every time it is needed because that would get a bit annoying and a, a bit nagging to the user. The other kind of permissions are the ones that we prompt for at runtime. These previously were known as dangerous permissions because it is the app acting outside of its sandbox. The sandbox is what we consider a safe space for the app because it's where that app can read and write and typically other apps will not have that ability to read and write. So when we're using another app or we're using something else on the device, many times we'll consider that a dangerous permission. Some examples of dangerous permission are using the camera, which we'll look at in this video. Uh, writing to storage is another dangerous permission. Access to contacts lists, so on and so forth. Think about that. If you downloaded some weather app or something like that, and it could access your contacts list without your permission, uh, imagine the trouble that could cause. So that's why we want to prompt for these at runtime. So how do we prompt for permissions? Well, the first thing is we want to check to see if the user has already granted this permission. If so, we don't need to prompt again. So we'll start with a context compat check self permission call. If that returns false, in other words, we do not have that permission, then we're going to go ahead and prompt the user for that permission. We'll use a register for activity result callback, which means we are essentially creating an intent and telling it to bring up this prompt, and then we're going to hear back, we're going to get a callback uh, with the user's response to that prompt. So there are two different ways that we can invoke register for activity result. Remember that we'll typically give that a contract, which I'll show in just a moment. One contract is access uh, sorry, activity result contracts request permissions, which means I want to request a single permission. The other option is activity request contacts dot request multiple permissions, and that's where we want to request multiple permissions, which is often the case with the camera, because typically with the camera, we're not only using the camera, which is one permission, but we're also writing the storage, which is another permission. So that's the one we're going to take a look at here. Now, I want to review with a, an animation that I did in a previous video, but this is good so we can remember how these activity for result callbacks work. So first we need to build the intent which says we want to do something. Next, we, we need to register for activity result and we pass in a contract. That's the contract I mentioned earlier, either request permission or request multiple permissions. And then we'll provide a lambda, which is essentially the lambda that will be invoked when we hear back from this callback. And then we launch the intent to start the whole process. So we're in our main activity. We create our intent, which in this case is we want to ask for these permissions. We register for activity result. We use the contract to decide if we're prompting for one permission or for two. And then we invoke launch with that intent. That will, in our case, put up a little dialog box that's prompting the user, do you want to grant this permission or deny this permission? And then we're going to hear back the user's response, and we're going to receive that in a Lambda. So with that overview, let's go ahead, jump right in, and get started. Let's start by navigating to our Android manifest and request these permissions. We will need to do this for any type of permission, whether it's dangerous or not dangerous. So we'll start with write external storage. And we'll add camera as well. Now, most of the rest of the work is going to happen in our main activity, so let's run back there. Let's start by adding a button to our button bar here. And actually, let's make it a button bar as well and put it in a row. You can see at the moment the buttons are stacked one on top of each other, so they're essentially aligned vertically. We want to align them horizontally, so I'm going to go ahead and add a row 
that will wrap them. And then after that, I'm going to duplicate this last button. And we'll keep it simple. And we'll simply make this our camera button. A text photo and on click will be take photo. This function does not yet exist, so let's use a little bit of IDE magic to go ahead and create it. And it appears I've gotten my curlies out of line just a little bit. Now let's remember our order of operations. First, we want to see if the user has already granted that permission. If so, we can continue with whatever we want to do. After that, we're going to prompt for permission. So let's start by seeing if the user has already granted that permission. We can use a little Kotlin shortcut where we create a function and assign to it the value of an expression. So here you can see I have two functions declared, has camera permission and has external storage permission. And whenever these functions are invoked, it's simply going to invoke whatever occurs to the right of this equal sign and then return the result. So kind of like an inline or a easy one line way to do things. Let's go ahead and import the manifest. We want the one in Android package here and that will wire up to our permissions. Now we can return to our take photo and let's put together an if test. So you see the top part of the if test confirms that the user has granted us camera permission and I'll go ahead and import this. And also the user has granted external storage permission. So at this point we can go ahead and invoke the camera. Invoke camera is a function that we have not yet made but we'll make right now and this is an ideal situation where a function should be used. In one path we'll invoke it right away and another path we're going to do another activity which in this case is ask for permission and then if we hear the response we want to hear we will invoke camera when we hear back from that other activity. So two different ways to get to the same place. So the if part is now taken care of and now we want to take a look at the else part. The else part's going to be a little bit easier to understand if we put things in a kind of funny order. So we want to request permissions, and for this, we need to get to this point where we do the register for activity result, and then we create the contract and the lambda, and then we launch that. So let's do that now. I'm going to create a new variable that we're going to access in this else part with a launcher. The variable is going to contain a lambda. So let's go ahead and write that. So you see register for activity result and then we have our activity result contracts dot request multiple permissions. You might remember this from our presentation. This will accept an array of permissions that we want to request and then it will return a list of keys for those permissions and the value whether the user accepted or denied those permissions. We'll take a fairly straightforward approach. Uh, the, you see the IT variable is a map of string which represents the permission requested and boolean which represents whether it was granted or not. Let's give this variable a more self-explanatory name. We'll rename it to results map. And now let's start by assuming that the user has not granted any permissions. Next, let's iterate over that result map and confirm that everything is true. And if something's not true, then we're going to stay with permission granted equals false. So note what's happening here. As long as we get at least one true permission, we'll flip the permission granted flag to true. If we get one or more falses, we'll flip it back to false and then return at for each means basically break out of this for each loop, we're done. Uh, nothing else to do because we know at least one permission has been denied. We could clean this up a little bit. It's weird to have an if test and then an immediate assignment based on that if test, but nonetheless, this will work for our purposes. So once this loop is complete, let's check to see if permission was granted. So if the permission is granted, we're going to go to this invoke camera function that we started. And we also called up here in this initial take photo function if the user has already granted these permissions. So you see, no matter what path the user takes, there is an opportunity to invoke the camera. Next, if the user does not grant permission, we just want to say, hey, look, I can't use the camera without permission. Now, we know it's a good idea to put our string resources in strings.xml. So let me go ahead and do that. Let's remember what we're looking at right here. We have open curly and close curly, and this is essentially a function or a lambda 
that is getting passed as the last argument to register for activity result. In the next part, we're going to launch this register for activity result with our intent. In the part that we just completed, we're handling the response that we get back from the user, which is the smiley face that goes into this lambda here. So you see open curly, close curly, and that matches with this area that I've highlighted here. That's the lambda, and this is that smiley face that we have received. With that, let's go back to our take photo function. We'll refer to our request multiple permissions launcher, which is the variable we created on line 281. And we're going to invoke launch, just as I promised. And for this, we need to provide it an array of permissions that we wish to request. We can use a shortcut in Kotlin to create an array all at once, and that is array of. And that will launch our function. So we know right now we don't have anything in invoke camera. I'm going to put just a dummy line so we can we can debug to this point. Now I'm going to set a few more breakpoints, which will allow us to go through and validate the work that we've done. Now I'm not actually going to invoke the camera in this video because that's just another probably 15 minutes worth of lecture. This lecture we're just focused on the mechanics of requesting permissions and getting a result. I'll have a follow-up video where we will actually invoke the camera. Let's go ahead and start our emulator. The emulator has now come up. It looks like I need to do a little more rearranging on this button bar, but nonetheless, I'll take care of that when this video is complete. Let's go ahead and click the photo button and notice the first breakpoint hits, which is this take photo function. So I'll choose F7, which is step into, and now we're in the take photo function. I'm expecting at this point that we do not have camera or external storage permission, and F8 confirms that because it comes down to the else part. So now we're putting together this launch where we are essentially signaling an intent to do our register for activity result, which will prompt for these permissions. So I press F8, let this continue. Now you notice it has signaled the activity to show us this dialog where it's prompting us for permission. So for pictures and video, we'll say only this time, and I'm doing that just so that I can run this experiment again if we need to. And then for photos and media, I will go ahead and choose allow. Now you notice it comes to our callback function, the register for activity result. And let's walk through and see if the user granted this permission, which indeed I did. So first of all, we get our first permission. And if I expand on IT down here in the variables tab, we can see this is the camera permission. And indeed, permission was granted. By the way, that's really cool. Take a look at that. Set value F2. If we wanted to try this with another value like false, we could just click on that drop down and change the value right here while we're running in line. Little sidebar there, but those are the things that I think really make you very good at debugging is knowing those little tricks. So let's go ahead and choose F8. We see permission granted is now true. Now we're going to invoke the invoke camera function. And now we know we just have a silly debug point there, but nonetheless, we can confirm that now we have the permission set up correctly to invoke the camera. And I press F9 to continue. Now that we've approved the permissions, let's click the photo button again. You see, once again, it comes to take photos. So we press F7. And now we're going to go into that take photo function and we're going to ask, has the user already granted these permissions? The answer this time around is yes. So we don't go to the else part, we stay in the if part, and we go straight to invoking the camera and straight to that debug line that we saw earlier, and then we continue. In this video, we've seen how to request permissions with request permissions, or more specifically in this case, request multiple permissions as we're going to need for our camera. In our next video, we're going to show how to actually toggle the camera and save the image that the camera captured on our device. And in a future video, we'll see how to synchronize that with Firebase Cloud Firestore. So as always, I hope this video was helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.